Let's add a custom 3D block model to our Minecraft mod. More in-depth topics for Minecraft modding available in the 121 modding courses linked below, covering writable and tameable entities, custom entity armor, and even custom entity inventories, among many more awesome topics. Alright, friends, we're back in Telegram once more, and in this tutorial, we're adding a custom 3D block model. That's gonna be very exciting indeed. Now, I did say, but you might have seen, that we're gonna add a chair. Now, it's sort of both of the same time because the custom block model is going to be a chair. Now this is also going to get functionality in the next tutorial so that's going to be very interesting indeed but yeah basically this is going to be our custom block model over here of course done via block bench. I will link both in the description as well as the top right corner in the card a good series on how to use block bench. It's a super simple program it really isn't you know too complicated and you can basically do the same thing as you have done with the entity if you have added an entity. Uh, you can simply basically make a new project over here and the project here has to be a java block item so if we were to you know just do a plus over here you can see there's different types of things that we can do and if this would be then a java block slash item and you have a couple of things here i don't want to go into too much detail in terms of block bench and how it works but basically you can then also change the display so how it's going to be looking in the in your hands right also first person also how it looks on your head i don't it doesn't, it doesn't really matter that much uh, how it looks on the ground. I actually really like this. So this would be as an item when I throw it onto the ground. How it looks in a frame and how it looks in the GUI. That's sort of the idea. Highly recommend it to basically, well, I mean, just play around with this a little bit. The block bench file will also be available to you down below. And then the only thing that you then need to do is go to file, export, export block slash item model. This is then going to be a, I mean, as you can see, chair.json, and we're going to save this. Now, I already have a chair.json, so I'm going to replace it, and that is it. This is going to be our block model JSON file that we're going to need, and for the rest, we're going to go back into IntelliJ. Because for this particular block, because, well, if we take a look at this, there is a definite front and back and sort of, you know, it is definitely a block that needs an orientation. And for this, we're going to need a custom block class. So we're going to go into our block custom package, right click new Java class, call the chair block here in this case, which will extend from the horizontal directional block. We're going to hover over this to implement the method over here, the codec method. Hover over this again, create constructor matching super. We're going to make this public over here. And as per usual, of course, the code is also all available to you down below in the GitHub repository. So we're going to have a map codec of type chair block, chair block, chair block, there we go. And that's going to be called codec equal to a simple codec. So the simple codec method with chair block colon colon new. And then in the map codec right here, you can simply call or return rather the codec over here. Awesome. We're also going to need just basically two things. And that is the get state for placement method, as well as the create block state definition method. In the block state definition method, we want to call builder.add and then add the facing property. The reason why we're doing this is because, well, we have a facing, right? So we want, when we set this down, let's say for the seating area to always be placed down where the player is looking into or the other way around, we can, of course, change this. That is changed with the get state for placement, while the create block state definition method is obviously needed so that the blocks, the block state property over here or facing is properly registered. When it comes to the get state for placement, I would say we're going to do this dot get default block state dot set value. And then we're going to set the value of the facing property to p to to the context over here that get horizontal direction that get opposite. We're basically getting the direction that the player is looking into and then turning it around. And we're going to basically be able to see in what sort of direction that uh, the share block will then be placed down in. I believe it should be placed down so that the seating area is looking towards us every time we set it down, regardless of like where we're looking. That's the idea. Uh, with that, though, we can register the custom block over here, which is once again going to be fairly simple. We're just going to have a public static final deferred block of type block, of course. This is going to be the chair equal to a register block method call. I'm going to call this chair right here. It's going to be a supplier of a new chair block. Very important. And then just properties of with a no occlusion here in this case. And that is actually in the grand scheme of things what we need in this case. The, we then want to add this to the creative mode tab. That will be a, a folly if I didn't do that. So that's going to be the chair right here. That's awesome. And then 
the question is what do we want to do next well uh, we basically want to go to the assets and then the question comes okay do we want to make this a well the model we need to use anyway this is similarly to what we've seen with the tomahawk right we had a custom item model and that just needs to be done here that can't be data gen we could feasibly do a data gen or for the block state json file now in my case i'm going to do this manually and i'm going to show you in why in just a second but first of all models and then a block over here and that is going to be the chair.json this is the json file that we've generated and exported from blockbench do note that the texture over here sometimes right right now it is completely correct tutorial mod colon chair although it's actually not completely correct it is almost correct because obviously this is under tutorial mod block slash chair so there you go so we basically always need to uh, change this up so that it points to the correct texture which would be under uh, tutorial mod textures block and then this is the chair.png here we go that's gonna be awesome and we also need an item model for this now the item model in this case is literally just a normal item model right obviously not like the chisel but rather like the following it's literally just going to be this pointing back to the chair block model file because because this one has included how to display it via a, an item and that is why we can literally just do that and when it comes to the block states json file well like i said we're gonna actually do the manual one block states there we go and that is actually under tutorial mod block states that's quite important so tutorial mod block states and then the chair.json i'm just going to copy this over you can see it is just the normal variance north south east and west and we're basically rotating the block by 90 degrees depending on which facing we have All right and the last thing we need is simply the translation of the block which of course is going to be i mean more than straightforward i would say there we go now we have the chair over here and that is crazy enough everything we're going to need now in this case once again if you have a block model that is well sort of rotatable in a sense right so that you know where the front is the back is stuff like that then obviously that is when you need this facing if you have a custom block model that doesn't have that right maybe it's just looking a little bit different then obviously in theory you don't need this facing over here but that i think feel like should be fairly obvious in this case but yeah the overall the main thing here is just that the model file that you generate via blockbench is basically put into the models block folder over here and of course you will still need a block stage json file and an item model json file for it as well and that is it so with that done let's jump into the game and see if it works all right and there we are in minecraft again and you can see the chair has been added if i set it down there we freaking go it basically sets down in well in this orientation that we have defined over here now what you will find is that well the the bounding box over here is a little bigger than you might expect now we can actually fix this and we can change this bounding box by changing the voxel shape so let's take a look at that as well now the voxel shape is um, it's not that hard to explain but let's just take a look an another look here in blockbench and the idea is that a normal block right if i were to add another cube over here and i were to size this up to 16 by 16 by 16 right denoted obviously by these ones right here this would be 18 so it's 16 uh, what you'll find is that this is the normal bounding box that we've just seen and yes this does go a little bit beyond that it doesn't matter that much because this is just visual and the bounding box over here the 16 by 16 by 16 that is the thing that is actually responsible for the collision let's say now you could do a perfect collision right with every single bit over here with the tiny uh you know this like tiny uh size over here 0 0.2 0.5 changes you could do that i highly recommend against it because usually you do not want perfect collision for for blocks it, because as the voxel shape gets more complicated it gets computationally more complex and it go, it's going to slow the game down significantly so in this case if you want a let's say instead of what we're going to do we're just going to have a, a combination of the following we're just going to get one like this if i recall correctly something like this uh, most likely is going to be the thing that we're going to do and that's going to be it right so this is going to be our voxel shape i think that's totally fine if you want to go a little bit more detailed then what i would suggest you do is you do this right so basically you do the number one seat and then you do the following just move this the other one so you do two different voxel shapes and then combine them and then you do this so this is what i would maximally recommend even there it's a little bit of a toss-up because this is 
you know, higher than a block. And if your voxel shape is bigger than 16 by 16 by 16, you can run into major issues. So I highly recommend basically doing it like this. Doing one shape at the bottom and then one shape here for the backrest, so to speak. But yeah, that's just a sort of a little excursion here when it comes to voxel shapes. Let's actually add them and let's see how that is going to look like. Uh, it's actually fairly straightforward. Inside of the chair block itself, we're going to have a private static final voxel shape. I'm going to call this the shape equal to block.box. And then we need to define the different minimums and maximums. So there's going to be three, zero, then three, not 30, but it's three, then a 13 over here a 16 for Y, and then a 13 again for Z or Z. Now you might say, where does this come from? Well, once again, let's just think about this. We have this block over here that is now at position 3, 3. Mm, could this be maybe the starting position of this one right here? Yes, X, Z, Y, Z, right? And then is exactly the starting position. And then the end position, right? Because obviously when you make a box, you literally just need two positions. You need the starting position there and then the end position. Now the ending position of this, of this is 11, 16, 11. Now you might ask why is this 11? Well, number one, because the cube is actually a size of two. So we actually need to do something like this. And then all of a sudden we get to 12, 16, 12. So I might, the 13 might actually be wrong. But the great thing about this is we're going to see this in just a second. And then of course, changing a number here, that's super, that's super easy. We simply want to get the render shape. You can see there's a render shape. There's actually a bunch of different shapes. So there's a get shape, update shape. There are collision shapes, interaction shapes. Now we just wanted to use the get shape method over here and return the shape. Reason why we want to use that one is that includes everything. So that's going to be everything. If we were to only do the render shape, then it would only render differently. The visual shape. So there's a bunch of different ones. So highly recommended to just use get shape and then just return one of them. If you, of course, want different shapes for different things, then you just need to do multiple voxel shapes. But that's a little bit beyond this particular tutorial. With that done, let's jump into the game again and see if it works. All right, finally, back in Minecraft. And if I were to hover over the chair, you can see, ta -da, there we freaking go. And the same thing goes if I stand on it. Now, of course, I'm still clipping into it a little bit. And yes, I'm floating right here. But once again, we're in block game over here. It is not too crazy. But yeah, and you can see actually that the bounding box is actually correct over here. So the 13 was right. And I mean, there you go. That is basically the idea. Uh, there's another way that we can actually um, see why the 13 was correct. I'm pretty sure. And the way to do this is to go into sort of a mode from the top. And you can see this is uh, basically, you know, you basically just count, right? Um, one, two, three. And that would be the thing that we would subtract from th the 16. Because obviously this would be 16 by 16. And then we just subtract three from here, three from here. And that would way we get to three and 13 on either end. There you go. And that is a custom block model added to Minecraft. And that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, well, we'll actually make the chair sittable. So hope to see you there. So, yeah.